بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. At the outset, I would like to express the Islamic Development Bank's and my heartfelt condolences to our brothers and sisters in Syria and Turkey for the suffering they have born because of the earthquakes. May Allah have mercy on those who perished and have mercy on those who will recover, insha'Allah. Our prayers go to them. Let me first express my sincere thanks and gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President of the United Arab Emirates and Prime Minister as, and the ruler of Dubai for the opportunity to speak to you today. Secondly, I wish to applaud the vision to bring the worlds together through this formal platform to shape the future of governments. At the Islamic Development Bank Group, we attach great significance to these meetings, which provide an avenue to analyze the critical development challenges affecting the world and how to address them. I am happy to share some insights on the impact of the regulatory frameworks and governance on socioeconomic development and investment. Reassessing this key issue is akin to revisiting the fundamentals of long-term economic development. Today, we view it against heightened global turbulence and uncertainty. Indeed, the world economy is still facing the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and suffering from the repercussions of the crisis in Eastern Europe with persistent inflationary pressures, threats of food and energy crises, high uncertainty, and tight financial conditions. Against this background, fears of global recession and stagflation have been mounting among economists and business leaders. At this juncture of the competing and compelling priorities, global leaders and decision makers need to keep abreast of the fundamentals and imperatives of long-term economic development. It goes without saying that, investment, that the investment in physical, human, and social capital, as well as in technology to build competitiveness and spur lasting growth, is imperative. Such investments should be geared towards ensuring sustainability, equity, and inclusiveness. Indeed, they should harness and embrace digital transformation, build on the public, private, and civil society partnerships, and respond to the environmental, social, and governance standards. I firmly believe that the success of these long-term investments hinge on one crucial factor, which is governance. Beyond the neoclassical growth model, modern theory highlights the critical role of institutions in explaining development performance. In their book, Why Nations Fail, published in 2012, Darren Achimoglu and James Robinson used decades of institutional data to prove that development failures is intrinsically related to the failure of governance. On the other hand, evidence has shown a robust positive relationship between an improved regulatory frame environment and aggregate investment, and thus economic growth. Countries stand to gain from a broad push for stre streamlining business regulations and procedures. Actually, macroeconomic and structural policies, when coupled with good governance, promote an enabling environment which fosters rapid and sustained economic growth. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, regulatory framework and governance should ensure market transparency and efficiency 
thereby addressing market failures by using suitable incentive mechanisms. Needless to say, when the regulatory framework is weak or poorly implemented, it can slow business responsiveness, divert resources away from productive investments, hamper market access, reduce job creation, and discourage entrepreneurship. In the same vein, clarity and stability are at the core of investment decision making as investors generally tend to avoid unpredictable and unstable environments, particularly when large capital requirements are involved. Here, I am tempted to rephrase the famous proverb, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, into a dose of unpredictability a day keeps the investors away. I hasten to add that an effective regulatory framework is not a one-size-fits-all. Regulatory frameworks should reflect and adjust to the domestic socio-political context. However, they must meet three intertwined critical criteria, clarity, agility, and effectiveness. In a proper environment, agility goes hand in hand with good governance, and governance should not be at the expense of efficiency and effectiveness. To reconcile this, technology can help with process re-engineering. We have seen how some emerging economies have succeeded in establishing social, special economic zones with well-designed regulatory frameworks and governance structures, thus attracting foreign direct investment in competitive activities and high growth sectors. The regulatory design of these zones may be borrowed as a template to spur growth in other sectors. Sound regulatory framework and good governance are not a one-off event, nor are they a panacea for the ills of sustainable development. Rather, they are important tools to help lay down the necessary rules which nourish fair and efficient conditions underlying sustainable pr prosperity, peace, and stability. Excellencies, distinguished participants, as the president of a multilateral development institution whose member countries are either emerging or developing economies spanning four continents, I recognize how government effectiveness makes a big difference in development effectiveness. In fact, when government strategies, rules, and regulations are well designed, explained, and implemented, and when institutions uphold property rights, transparency, and accountability, resources are then optimally allocated. This builds trust between governments and investors, domestic and foreign alike, hence promoting economic growth. In many of our member countries, we have seen how this has led to qualitative transformation, significantly reducing poverty and improving the living conditions of the population. We have also seen how many of our rich resource member countries have broken the so-called natural resource curse, according to which countries endowed with natural resources perform worse economically than countries endowed with few natural resources. Actually, these countries have performed well thanks to good governance, sound policies, and a solid institutional framework backed by sound leadership. In the context of our deliberations at this 2023 World Government Summit, what matters most is how effective governments are at building trust that promotes investment and economic growth. Government effectiveness is achieved by a strong leadership that pursues good governance, develops sound and predictable policies, and builds solid institutional frameworks. In many developing countries, regulatory reform will take time as it needs to break decades or even centuries of institutional fragility that has been ingrained in socio-cultural practices. This raises the urgency of reform in governance and the time to act is now. Thank you very much for your attention. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.